Well, there you are. Uh, brain fuck, GRM brain fuck. Isn't that the best title of the year? Uh, but thank you so much to Sibylla Berg uh, for her book, um, GRM brain fuck, and to working backwards to Max Lobe um, and his book, A Long Way from Douala, is actually going to be published in English already um, in probably February of 2021. So thank you to him. And to the wonderful Simona Lappert as well. Der Sprung, she was talking about. I'm I've read it in German. It's an amazing book. And I really, really hope that we can have that in English too at some point very soon. And then Fabio Andina in Ticino, um, this marvelous book, La Pozza del Felice, which is just beautiful. And if you love Swiss mountains and you love peace and quiet and so on, you'll love this, this novel as well. So thank you to all of them. Um, and also at this point, I'd like to thank um, the filmmaker, Mihai Andre and, and I, we've been making these uh, films with the authors together over the last uh, week or so. And the authors have been fantastic, really, really enthusiastic. Um, we had a, a, a sort of a, a rather arbitrary selection process. I wrote to about 25, 30 Swiss authors, personal emails and asked them if they wanted to participate. So it's not as if we've only selected these. We also support many other Swiss authors, but these sort of took up the challenge and said, okay, we'll make these short films. And as you can see from the formats, they're all slightly different, but um, that's fine as well. This is a new world we've entered. And just to reassure you that you can watch all these films again, every single one of them, on our YouTube channel and um, you'll be able to use them as well if you want to introduce your books. This is talking to the authors, to publishers, to translators. So everything's free, free to access. So thank you very much um, to all of you. And we have another batch now of four authors from Switzerland. Um, we have the absolutely amazing Nora Gomringer um, and she's going to talk to you and Roland Bouti in uh, French and Roland is speaking in French and he's voiced over by our wonderful intern Rosie Eyre who's um, fluent in French and just absolutely brilliant. So thank you to Rosie also for all her research and support. And then we have Karl Ruman whose great book Der Held um, he'll be talking about and Vanni Bianconi who also belongs to us in the UK. He's lived in the UK a long time and he's from Ticino and I want you to hear them now all talk about their books. Thank you. Hi, hello. My name is Nora Gomringer. I'm a German and Swiss author. I normally write in and publish in German, um, but have been translated or have had the luck to be translated and the good fortune in several languages already um, in English uh, in two, ti two, two times, two versions with two books. Um, Paul Henry Kempel is one of my English translators or translators into English and uh, the wonderful Annie Rutherford of uh, Edinburgh. Um, with her uh, and uh, Burning Eye Books, uh, we published Hydra's Heads. Um, I think that is already three or four years ago. It is a compilation of different texts um, that have been published by me over the years. Um, this year, uh, 2020, in fact, uh, two new publications have come out. Um, a large one is, and the very new one, is Gottes Anbieterin with the German publishing house Voland und Quist, who always have a, a little extra in the book um, because uh, they always include a CD, which the author herself has uh, had recorded in a studio. So this is what it looks like. It is in fact a mirror <laughs> and it will um, yeah, always reflect the reader. Um, it's centered around the idea of loss and the tragedy of loss. In fact, I, um, I endured um, my friend's death in last, last year, 2019. And uh, it sparked a series of poems and um, yeah, and also all my questions uh, 
um, that I had um, talking to my God. <laughs> Therefore, I, um, I'm, I'm sure you can't really see it here, but maybe you do. <laughs> um, <clears throat> you see the praying mantis arms here stretching towards each other as very much uh, like God does that with, um, with Adam on the ceiling of the 16th uh, chapel. Uh, 16, yeah, the 16th chapel, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, this book is, um, is a little bit of a roller coaster. Um, I'm very proud that some of the poems have been made into poetry films and uh, that I've gotten quite a lot of media attention for it, especially um, after um, they, they, my publishing house was very proud of it because uh, after three months already, the first edition was sold out and they have, they're on the second edition of this now. Um, Gottes Anbieterin, um, a proud piece of mine, or yeah, my ninth book of poems, in fact, that I that I was able to publish with um, Voland and Quist. And just in fact, today I received um, a tiny little um, issue, uh, um, which was published in a row, um, this or in a series. Sorry, and um, the series is called Poesie Album, and every author who is published in it gets a number. So my number is three five eight, and I was able to collaborate with the wonderful Katrin Prange, who is. Um, uh, a scholar in Hamburg at the University of Hamburg and uh, is writing her dissertation on my work. And she um, did the, um, the selection of poems. So you find in this edition 50 poems that have been published uh, before, some of them already also translated into other languages, English as well. Um, but this really is a wonderful little edition. I'm very proud to be in it because it's helpful for teachers to, um, to make the decision whether, you know, not only present uh, students with prose, but maybe really to turn to poetry. And then for five euros, students really take this little publication and they, um, they, they read it and become acquainted with a new author. And in this case, uh, I'd be proud if it was me. <laughs> Well, so far so good. Um, I live in uh, Bamberg, which uh, is a tiny town, well, 70,000 inhabitants in Bavaria. And I have the good fortune to run um, Germ uh, Bavaria's largest artist residency, which is situated in Bavaria. So I am on yeah, on, on two sides of, of being an artist, I, I, I foster and I help artists, I support them. And on the other hand, I am an artist who is very proud to be supported by so many wonderful translators. And I'm always curious to work with translators um, and have been doing this for many projects. And uh, I'm proud to say that, um, yeah, proud to be included here. I thank you very much for the attention and this platform. Have a good day. Parfait. Là, je suis uh, Roland Buti. My name is Roland Buti. I'm here in my office, which is where I write and where I work. You can't see it, but there's a big window there. And outside, you can see the countryside looking down over Lausanne, for those who are familiar with it. I'm a history teacher in a sixth form, uh, a gymnase, as it's known here. And I have been for several years now. I really enjoy this profession for allowing me to pass on to these young people lessons of history that help us to understand events that are happening now. That's a major objective for me. Other than that, um, I write. My last book, which is called Le Milieu de l'Horizon in French, was translated into English, which I'm very proud of. Uh, its title in English is Year of the Drought. Uh, unfortunately, my English is terrible. It's a beautiful cover and it was published by Old Street in London. And it was even released in paperback. I stumbled upon this in Dublin Airport and so I bought it. My latest book is Grand National. Um, here it is. It was also translated into German as uh, Das Leben ist ein Wildergarten. And I love the cover of the Italian version, which was published under the same title in Milan. So, um, there you have it. Grand National is a story of Carolo, who's a landscape gardener. 
uh, whose elderly mother has been living in a retirement home. Then one day she disappears, she vanishes, and after a lot of anxiety, he ends up finding her. It turns out that she's been hiding out in an old hotel, a luxury hotel. Um, there are quite a few of them around here on the shores of Lake Geneva. The hotels that were built at the end of the 19th century, largely for English clients, rich ones, um, coming in search of fresh air, uh, that's how it's sold to them, who wanted to escape the smog and the coal fumes of London. So um, after finding his mother there, she ends up staying there. Um, he moves her into the hotel permanently and gradually he starts to learn about the part of his mum's life he never knew about, particularly her experiences as a young girl growing up during the Second World War. Um, so that's a bit about the storyline. Um, but I'd say fundamentally, the book's about how often we don't truly know the people we live with. We only know one part of them, the part we interact with. But there's always a part shrouded in mystery. The mother has her mysterious side, and so does Carlo. And the book is also about a separation. Carlo finds out that his wife, who he shared a home with, is becoming a stranger to him. And even with our own parents, it's hard to really know what their lives were like before we were born. And then the book is also about nature and about gardens, which is a subject that fascinates me. Carlo is a landscape gardener. Um, he designs gardens for the rich foreigners coming to live in Switzerland nowadays, um, for tax reasons, usually. Um, so he creates these gardens to remind them of the home countries. Um, Russian gardens, uh, Chinese gardens, so that when these people open the window, they feel like they're back home. But as he's going through this difficult period in his life, he ends up finding refuge in an allotment, um, a family garden belonging to his employee, who's from the Balkans. And he ends up discovering that this Balkan employee also has a life he didn't know about, um, a tragic backstory. But he finds refuge in the allotment, which is a tiny plot with a little shed, the kind you often see in the suburbs here. Um, and for me, gardens are such an interesting topic because nowadays there's this trend for gardening. Here in Switzerland, um, and even more so in England, this idea of controlling a little corner of nature, taming it, while at the same time, it feels like the natural world has gone mad, um, that we've lost control of it, um, global warming, viruses. Um, and throughout every period of history, when things have been going wrong, we've had this temptation to retreat into the garden, this mini Eden or mini Xanadu, which belongs to us and that we can master. I'm Karl Riemann and I live in Zurich and I write novels and audio plays for children and adults. I also work as, transla as a translator and I think it's very exciting to bring, bring the stories from one language to the other and with the story also the whole background. I used to write only for children but then it became too exhausting and I started writing for adults. I am an adult as you can see so the children's language is not my language and it's always very difficult to write in a foreign language. Most of my books are about the fact that anything is possible as, you, as long as you believe in it. One of my children's books, this one here, is about a penguin who can fly but only be, um, until he learns that he can't. And uh, my last novel, called Der Held, which would be the hero in English, is about two high-ranking soldiers accused of war crimes. Now, one of them has been acquitted, but he feels guilty. The other one has been convicted, but he feels innocent, which is a difficult situation. And in between them, there is a woman who lost her husband in the war. She's seeking the truth, 
but in the name, also in the name of her teenage son. The two soldiers have a chance to tell their versions of the events. Who's telling the truth? There are clues, but the final answer is up to the readers. I myself was a soldier in a special unit for a long time, and I know how soldiers think, especially when it comes to questions of guilt and responsibility. That alone makes the hero a very important book for me. I did not want to accuse anyone or justify anything. It was much more for me, important for me to ask the right questions. The woman in my book says at one point, every war is always personal. Beyond the big slogans and pompous proclamations, you know, are the little people who have lost someone. They have their own truth and they should not allow it be taken from them. Where does my novel take place? I leave that open. It could be Yugoslavia, it could be Armenia, Ukraine, Israel, any country where people point at each, each other accusingly uh, because they know different truths. I'm an author and I'm interested in the power of stories. By telling stories, one brings order to chaos, creates another reality, another truth, and the fact that not everyone believes the same truth thing to be true is a part of it. One can seek arguments for the truth, you can explain and reason, or one can tell a story and thus turn the search for truth into an experience. That's the real exciting thing about writing. The Loveless House is an apartment block in East London. Its story is told in a decalogue of missed encounters. Scraps of conversation in various languages and accents are heard. Questions and pleas are listened to but can never be answered while climbing the Loveless House fantastic staircase all the way up to the 10th floor and into the attic where one of the house mysteries at least is revealed. I'm Vanni Bianconi. I'm in the Loveless House in East London. I wrote a story by the same title, The Loveless House. It's the story of the desire of an encounter with what's around us, who is around us. The narrating voice, or narrating ear in this case, follows the neighbor for a bet in a decalogue of attempts of encounters. Floor after floor in the loveless house, they hear people shouting or whispering. They try to get in touch, they try to connect, and everything in a way seems to fail until they get all the way to the top, into the attic of the loveless house in the dark, and there is something is revealed. This story is now published in an anthology by the title Lucifer Over London, published by Influx Press and uh, The Loveless House has been put into music by the composer Dominique Legendre. Here, orbital flights of winders are framed within tiers of hexagonal landings. A ring is cut in thirds, then stretched from floor to floor and finally redirected at each level to accomplish the full revolution in three stages, driving threefold patterns through space and leaving a cam-shaped vortex rising up the center. The elevator is down and it's even talking shit. Do you hear it? Will you come with me? Up those stairs, we have to get to the top of the building. I bet you 20 quid that the two people carved up there aren't saints. Aren't saints at all, just two fuckers like you and me, mate. This is Loveless House, yeah? This is planet Earth. 
rascal, take in the piss. Same old rascal, take in the piss. Same old rascal, take in the piss. Same old rascal, take in the piss.